doing it, let me just confirm that it's working. It is working. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is DJ Keemstar, and I'm here with... Only Use Me Blade. And our special guest today, we have YouTube.com slash Deranker. What up, Deranker? What's up, guys? So, right off the bat, dude, it's all over the news. It's what everyone's talking about, the shooting in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, your guys' thoughts on that? Wait, this happened in Colorado? Yeah. Aurora, Colorado, I believe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was near – it's like it's like near Denver. I heard that he had his fucking uh, – what is it called? The um... – his apartment booby trapped or something. Yeah, I did hear that. Well, like, okay, very so sophisticated too. For in case there's people that don't know what's what happened. All right, this is what I know from watching the news all day so far. All right, the guy parked in the back of the theater. All right, somehow, and they speculate that somebody let him in, so they think there might be a second person. But somehow he went into the fire exit. You know how. In the bottom left-hand corner, right-hand corner of the theater. Hold up, there's... hold up. Let me, let me stop you. I had a report on CNN that he came in with everybody and then left to go get the weapons, and that was on CNN. Oh. So he actually walked into the theater with everybody and then left by himself, went out and got the weapons. And that's just going by a tweet on CNN. So. Okay, okay. Well, uh, my report was that he came in the back, but regardless... The guy was dressed up with uh, – he had uh, the, the riot gear um, helmet on. He had goggles and he had a gas mask and he was dressed up like a character that's in the new Batman, supposedly. He throws – Did he come in like that or did he go out to his car and dress up back up like that? I believe he came in like that. So Why? That, just, that wasn't a red flag? Well, that no. Was, at movie Everybody premieres. dresses up, yeah. At movie premieres like Batman or superhero, like people dress up like the characters. Like they were showing YouTube videos of this, and everyone was dressed up like Batman and stuff. Like, yeah, people actually do this. So he comes in looking like the villain. He throws two um, explosions. One of them was tear gas. They might have both been tear gas. All right, he throws two grenade type things that release smoke and, and one of them was definitely tear gas all right so people are gagging then he pulls out he had three weapons he pulls out a shotgun and just starts shooting people all right he had three weapons on him and uh 12 are confirmed dead 59 injured 59 injured what about him did he kill himself no, they actually the police got there the police was the police station was only 3 blocks away from where this happened, and the police got there in a minute and a half, in 90 seconds from the first shot, they were there on the scene. So they pulled into the back of the building, and he was there by his car, and I guess they arrested him with no trouble whatsoever. They got him in custody real easy. That's oh, weird, because normally in like mass situations like that, the person takes themselves out. Yeah, and he had a bulletproof vest on. He had bulletproof uh, groin shit, bulletproof shins, bulletproof arms. Like He had all this gear on, so I'm really shocked that they apprehended him out. like that. He pushed out. Couldn't do it. But, uh, That's just weird. So is there is there a motive? Is there a reason behind this? No, nobody knows. But he told the cops that there was, you know, traps in his apartment. And I just seen a report of the police speaking, and they were like, his whole apartment is booby trapped. He's like, it, it might take hours, it might take days, it might take a week, and they had to evacuate the whole apartment building. It's like incinerary shit too, like shit that just burst into flames. Huh. Oh. They showed, like, a robot going up to his window, breaking the window to, like, put cameras and stuff in there to see what's going on. And they're like, this thing is booby-trapped. <laughs> the fuck? That's just a weird, weird situation. I don't understand that. Like, what what do you make of that? Like, I don't get it. Like, are you so obsessed with Batman that you want to live the, like, the... oh, oh, he also dyed his hair red as the Joker. Mm. That's another thing, that he had dyed red hair. So this is uh, fucking... I, I have no idea, dude. This is crazy. Bath salts. Uh, oh, 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 <laughs> I was thinking about that. 
<laughs> what if he was on bath salts and just lost his mind? Fucking bath salts, man. No, I, I, I don't know. So then here's the other thing. All right. When, when all these tragedies happen, right, what do people do? Let's raise money. Let's raise money. Let's raise money. Dude, 90% of these fucking charities are scams. The money is never going to reach the victims. So I heard Gold Glove was doing a stream raising money. So I just I put up a video on my page telling everyone, look, a 9-11 telethon, they raised over a billion dollars, and they only gave 15% to the families. All right, a billion dollars, and they only gave 15% to the families. Uh, they did uh, all these charities for Haiti, and none of the money ever went there. Same thing with Katrina. Uh, you know, I mean, I so so Gold Glove did like a, a live stream charity. What did he would just say? <laughs> that the money that he was going to make from the live stream was going to go to the families or something? Right. So what I'm, – and I'm not calling – I don't think like Gold Glove is going to steal the money and keep it himself. But what I thought was Gold Glove is going to raise the money and then give it to the Red Cross, right? And okay. And the fucking money is never going to get to the victims. The Red Cross has been caught multiple times fucking not giving the money to the actual cause, right? And, and Red Cross is the most respected charity there is out there. Imagine all these other little fucking bloggers and skids on the internet and commentators that are raising money. Who knows where the money's going to? And it's so simple. I mean, if you have a computer and you're online, can't you Google search the victims? Can't you find out what their address is? Can't you fucking put a letter in the mail and fucking send them the money directly? You know, and another thing is I feel like some of these commentators want to, like, kind of take credit. Like, we raised money for this. Like, they just kind of want to make themselves look good. Like, I don't think they really care about the cause. So no, here's the thing. Here's, here, it's like I said before, and I've told you this. They do it. Let me get that. Uh, you know, they do it for the tax write-off. If you just sent a check to the families or, or, you know, or sent money to the families, you wouldn't have anything to go to the government and say, hey, I, I donated this. You go, you go put it to the Red Cross, you have record for that, and you can. It's a tax write off. But you know, it's the that, same with all that's these. That's true too. You know, it's that's, it's a tax write off. That's that, that's why the YouTubers do it. I mean, they're not fooling anybody. They're they're no kind hearted motherfuckers. They're just gonna raise the money so they ain't got paid in taxes. Well, I don't think that's right a hundred percent of the time. I'm sure. Oh, I do. I'm sure there's there's YouTubers out there that just want to raise money and want to help it, but maybe I don't think they're intelligent enough to understand. Like, if they get a bunch of money and give it to the Red Cross. Like, that money is not going to get to the victims. So what I was fucking – I made a whole video on this and put it on my channel over at Team Noble, and I was tweeting it about it and fighting with everyone on Twitter for, like, the last fucking couple hours. And uh, then Gold Glove uh, released that he is actually sending the money to, um, to the police department in Aurora, Colorado – so, because the the police department has the addresses to all the victims, so I actually support that now. But at first, I was like blasting it, like, "No, do not send your money to Gold Glove unless you know what Gold Glove is doing with the money." So that's that's a thing that the people really, really need to wake up and 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 research and listen about. Yeah, and also, I mean, a lot of times, like, even if, like, let's say someone does a charity and they literally all the money goes to where it needs to go to, a lot of times it's. I, I honestly believe they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it so that they could somehow like it's like a PR move. Like, oh look, this guy's doing this. Like, sure. If you, what about if you, individual? Re- exactly. What about individual responsibility? Can't an individual send money directly to the families? Why does it, we have to pull our money together? You know, I don't get it. Because it's harder to prove as a tax write off. That mean, money still it, goes in your pocket if it's a tax write off. If I let's, let's take King of the Web for example, you win seventy five hundred bucks, all right, yeah, and you de- donate it to fucking Water dot org, what everybody wants to fucking do. That's an organization. That's a nonprofit organization who raises money for people who need water. You have proof of that. You send that to the government, and you have seventy five hundred dollars off your taxes. So literally, that seventy five hundred does wind up in your pocket because you get take it off. The, the YouTubers don't. They, they, they don't fool me, man. That's what they do. That's what. That's what. You ever see watch a game show and a celebrity's on there? Where's that money go? It goes to a charity. It goes to their favorite charity. Right. And at the end of the year, it gets back in their pocket because it's a tax write-off. Every dime. Don't let people fool you with, oh, I want to raise money and I want to help them out. No, okay, yeah, maybe you do and you make yourself feel good for a fucking month. But, you know, at the end of the year, you ain't got to pay no taxes or, or, or at least $7,500 or whatever you – every dime you donate is coming back to you. If you can prove it's a legitimate 
you know, uh, we, you know we organization. Seem, we seem kind of hypocritical because we just ran a campaign, Dildos for Africa, but we knew that we weren't ever going to win. <laughs> You know, we we knew that we we were never actually. And don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. It's great to help people out, even if Why'd it's you, with, you know video, sexual time satisfaction. Time out, time out, time out. Why did you have me put a video up on my channel talking about this? If you if you honestly think we're not going to win, I mean, the only way we're going to win is if people actually vote ten times a day. And you know, I don't. I don't. One guy's think... cheating though. You're not going to beat him. Yeah, the the, the guy. Well, first of all. Blade, I don't know if you've seen this, but there is a guy that's literally cheating. I mean, there is no way he's got the votes that he has. I mean, he's up to like two million. It's ridiculous. He he only has like a hundred and seventy two thousand subs. You know, I, I don't yeah, he does get a lot of views, but I mean like in one day he had like eight hundred thousand votes. All right, so divide that by ten, isn't that eighty thousand people voting? Ten times a day. I just it doesn't no people aren't doing that. A lot of people are researching it, but you know they're they're coming at me and they're like this guy is cheating, this guy is cheating. Like a lot of people are coming to me, but I mean it's it's kind of a tough situation because like it's I do think that's a very small percentage of it is you know honestly out of the goodness of their heart they want to donate to a charity or do whatever, but it's kind of hard to not attack them but question them. Because, well, you know what well, I mean? It's like, what I'm you look is, like the asshole, that's why. Blade, Blade, why don't they just fucking send money to charity and just be like, yo, guys, I sent this money to the relatives, here's the check, and I hope you do the same, and that be the exactly. end of it. Exactly. Don't send it to me, send it to your charity. Send it to your favorite why charity. Why do people need to send it to you? <laughs> so they get the tax write off. Well, Dude, what do you think I, mean, I did when we raised are... money for Haiti? That's what, I was like 290 bucks off my fucking taxes, dude. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's the thing. FAG. And it went in my fucking pocket. <laughs> F, Dranker, you're an asshole. <laughs> but it was. Instead but of paying F-G, you know, $1,500 in, in taxes, I only paid, you know, 1210 Whatever it was, you know. Okay, I'm not. I'm not attacking Gold Glove, but I'm. I'm. I'm asking. Was it something where people were sending money into Gold Glove, or was it just? Based off the monetization of the views. Gold Glove has a chip in and people are sending money to the chip in and then he's taking the money and he sent it to the police office, uh, the police office, which is I think is a lot better than him sending it to Red Cross or what, what, you know, I want I just feel like why do people even have to send money to, to Gold Glove? Like can't Gold Glove just say, look, here's the address of the police department. Send your money here with a note. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's yeah, it, it, it would work the best, same out, same way too. People who are going to give are going to give. Hey, this is my favorite charity. This is where I'm sending my money. I hope you would, you know, take time and have the heart to do at least said something, whatever you can, to to this company or this this charity. And and it would you would probably wind up getting the same amount of money who would send to that charity rather than just send to you. But again, he knows why he's doing it. Send I mean, I don't me. I don't want to bring up individuals, me. but like. Woody got a ton of hate for fucking sending money to charity. He got a ton of hate for it. But Why? I, w- I want you to repeat that statement for a second and see, <laughs> how, and see how ridiculous that is. And I'm not saying you're ridiculous. I'm just saying how ridiculous that is that no. if, you, if you donate a whole bunch of money, that's like me going, okay, guys, I'm going to go to my bank account and I'm going to empty it. And all that money, I'm literally going to hand it over to the mother of one of the people where their son was at the ho- like at the theater, I'd probably I'd still get hated on. I know, know like it, it's 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 crazy that. But the there, thing there's is, a is fine, there's a fine line, but b- between us saying, "Hey, open up your eyes and see that maybe your money's not going where it's supposed to," and "Fuck you for donating to charity." See what I'm saying? Like it's kind of a gray area. Yeah. You're all, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're always going to have those people that say, "Oh, he's just going to keep the money," or you know. They're just being completely, you know, assholes. I get messages and every day. It. You're gonna sure. keep all the dildos. You're gonna for keep yourself. all of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have, I've had a couple ideas, bro. So, like, you know me, I'm like a chill person, right? You know, I'm pretty laid back. Yeah. I, I was playing, and for some reason, earlier in the day, like normally I play at night, but like uh, lately, I've been playing like earlier in the day. There is lots of degenerate fucks on Xbox Live. Like, just people that just talk all kinds of trash, right? 
Like me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm talking about these kids that okay, are ahead. that are like you know what I mean. They're they're in they're in their mom's house and they're just talking all this trash. And I, and I thought about this. Hopefully, it could be something I want to do. This so hopefully in Seattle, right? I want to be able to like IP track where the where this this is coming from, where this hate's coming from, where the, all this talking shit's coming from, right? And I actually want to like knock on the door to the house <laughs> with like a laptop, right? And I'm assuming that the parents are going to answer. I'll be like, uh, right. Mrs. Johnson, whatever. Uh, let me just show you what your kid was saying to me on Xbox Live. Play a little video for them, and they'd be like. I kind of want to do like a scared straight. I thing. will fund that. I will fund that if we make that video. I will literally <laughs> fund that project. And the reason why I think – here's the reason why I think it could work <laughs> from the start, okay? Most of the time when I play, especially Modern Warfare 3 because there's so many people playing, they try to match us up locally. Like I'm always seeing yep. people with 425 and 206 here. area codes or like Seahawks yeah. or whatever, yeah, Mariner fans and stuff like that. And I'm thinking if there's a way to track it – if I were to actually go, because I'm a pretty big dude, you know what I mean? Like, if I were to go to somebody's house, and obviously I have to talk to their parents first. Like, that, that's a given. I'm not fucking just going to go. they piss themselves. they piss themselves. I think that would be fucking hilarious. I think that would make for great YouTube videos. I had a similar situation like to, about two years ago. To catch a troll. Have a seat. Mm -hmm. Just have a seat over here. Have a seat. <laughs> Did you say that you would anally rape my mother? <laughs> in the third round of the Fallen SND, when we were in game chat, you said that you would hack me. Like, you know what I mean? Just like, just go at him like that. I think that'd be fucking funny. I'm still sick, so don't mind my bronchitis laughing. <laughs> um, like, I'm a nice guy, but if I if I run up on somebody and just get really serious for a minute, they're going to crap themselves. Yeah, you know? I actually, I actually, and Duranker can attest to this, two years ago, these people were hacking me. They were, like, fucking knocking me offline on my stream, and they were really fucking with my personal life. Well, I mean, a lot of people don't understand what I did at the attorney's office for eight years is I found people. You know, our clients had a secured debt against them that already went through litigation, and I'd have to find them, find the money. So that's what I did is I would dox people for a living. So I, I found these kids that were fucking with me, right, these so-called hackers. And I got their moms on the phone and oh, were yeah, just telling their parents like what they were doing. And they all got grounded. They got kicked off the internet. I was just finding people left and right on the stream and that's talking awesome. to their parents. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah. I remember you talking to that one mom straight up. She goes, he's never going to be on the internet ever again. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I'm not a huge fan. Like, I like the fact that on the internet that you can kind of say or do whatever you want. But at the same time, I, I dislike it because, I don't know, it's like, you wouldn't say that if I was right there. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Like, how, okay, how often during, like, all these, like, YouTube meetups that happen, like, PAX... E3, all this stuff, do like three months prior, they're going at it on Twitter, right? Yeah. Like they're going at it, they're fucking just, just they did, don't like each other, and not in a playful, let's gain some subs kind of way. Like they honestly don't care for each other. But then when they meet up, everything's cool. Yep. Yep. That's yeah, kind of like boring. you and Walshy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing Walshie. is, is like, okay, so Walshie. I'm the biggest one that's guilty of that, right? Like, um, you know, most of my career, I've been an internet troll. I've been a trash talker. I've been an asshole. Mm -hmm. And like, if I were to ever meet these people face to face, would I ever sexually harass a girl? Maybe, but not to the extent I would do on uh, Xbox Live. Absolutely. You know? I'd love to see you literally bend somebody's mother over your knee and shave her ass hair and roll it up with a blunt and smoke it. I'd pay for that. <laughs> However, um, you know, you have seen me go off live <laughs> at someone. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty awesome. Like, I'm not going to lie. That was pretty sweet. And that, that's another thing. Like, uh, I keep on seeing these things like people go, uh, Blade, I lost all respect for you for doing doubles for Africa. I'm like, you've never met me. <laughs> like, you, you've never, like, kicked it with me. Or like, I mean, you may you may feel like you know me just from me doing commentaries or whatever, but like, 
I, I just don't get the I've lost out of respect for you. Like I'm supposed to just like slit my wrist or something. Dude, like, oh my god. There is this fucking ginger that uploaded this video attacking you for that video. All right. And he's no, got a little bit of a following, and I know I know how you are. You probably don't want to give him any attention, but did wanna... he link, did he link me in the video or no? Uh, I don't think he linked the actual video. He just copied your video and used it in his video. Whatever, copyright. Like, but anyhow, anyhow, I, let, let him let him hate. Like, are you? Are... Like, I I don't have any control over toothless virgins that get mad over the internet for something I don't even care about. The best thing about it. <laughs> The best so, about it is he. I don't know. I don't know who this. I don't know who this dude is. But hey, uh, if you're listening, go fuck yourself. How about that? Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna look at and see if I care. Like uh, that's stupid. Like whatever. If if people want to talk shit about me, let them talk shit about me. More views for me. Fuck them. Like I don't. That's that's so corny to me. Like it's YouTube. It's the internet. And people literally get passionate and and sweaty and fucking and 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 and, and really dude, think no, that I give no. a fuck. Do you think? Everyone that talks shit about like a C Danners or a fucking a white boy or a Woody, do you think that they give a fuck? They don't. Like that's the thing that you're nothing. You know what I mean? Like fuck off or right, do it some more. You're, some you're more. a blip Everyone's on the screen than, of my laptop. Yeah, everyone is more than free to make videos about me. Call me fat. Call me a piece of shit. Call me a bad Call of Duty player. I don't care. Just link me in the video. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> the greatest thing about this video is this fucking ginger said in his video, he goes, you have little kids watching you and looking up to you like a role model and you're going to do diddle those for Africa. And that's where I get pissed off because right. look, we no play model. an M17 game. All right. Our content is us cursing and swearing and being adults, all right? We're not responsible for children watching our videos. No one said that. We never said, hey, we are a role model. Those kids' parents are responsible. That's the stupidest argument anyone can ever make. People say I mean, there, there is uh, to kind of agree with them on this for like a fraction of it. Like you do have to be somewhat responsible knowing that, yes, our audience is young. But at the same time, like I'm not making Mr. Rogers here. I'm not making a child show. I wish I was. I wish I did make uh, the fucking Sesame Street of Call of Duty videos because then my, my audience would be much bigger. I, I really wish <laughs> like I really wish I would. But like. A, I'm too lazy and I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to be me. And if people want to watch, they can watch. That's how my attitude's always been. I'm just going to do me. And then if people want to watch, they're going to watch. If they don't want to watch, they're not going to watch. I'm fucking blessed uh, that people even watch my shit. Uh, oh, I'll give you this, man. Just the other day, you know, I got three kids and they were in the bedroom and I hear my videos playing. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm going, I go, guys, don't watch my videos. They're bad for you. I mean,. <laughs> Here I am putting these videos out for kids, and I won't even allow my own kids to watch me. And they're, and they're 10, 11, you know, about the about the YouTube age. And I am like, no, you ain't allowed to watch those. <laughs> but I don't it's care all the if, time. If, if an 8-year-old is, is watching my videos. And, you know, I, I never thought I'd live the day. Didn't see the day I told an 8-year-old to fuck off. <laughs> so, But I do, but I don't want my kids to see it. <laughs> Yeah. Kind of hypocritical, you know? I know. I, I hear you. The comments that get to me is, what will Mia think of this when she's older? That always gets me. It's like, God, I don't know. 
I don't know. They're, they're, you know, but and then they then they go and they tell their friends who I am, who they're, 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 you know, who their dad is, and they're like, "Your dad's the ranker? Oh my god!" And they're like, "Oh god." <laughs> It's fucking the th- terrible. Because the thing is, is like, um, you know, we're not the only ones that have to deal with this. You got comedians, you got all different types right. of people that have to somewhat deal with this when they have children. Like, yeah, daddy, you know, let, let's say, I don't know, fucking Cat Williams or whoever. Well, you know, it's got to be easier to explaining than, than explaining like your mom was a porn star. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean? Can't, you know, there's worse things. Uh, change. Let's change topics a little bit. Uh, I recently went to X Jaws is uh, channel, and I'm not hating on him, but recently all his videos are getting like disliked and like so much hate. I've never seen that kid get so much dislikes. Uh, does anyone know what the hell is going on with him? No. No. Like his last like five videos are just getting hammered with hate. I don't. I don't know. Was a specific topic. I just. I thought maybe like he did something in the community and people hate him now, but I, I can't fa- find out what's going on. I was searching it on Twitter. I was looking all over. I was just really shocked when I saw all the dislikes on his videos. So. I don't know. I heard. All right. Are you, are you still cool with that dude? Or yes, no. Well, I mean. I, I know you were. Then you weren't. Then you were. Then you weren't. He d- he really did me dirty. But I saw him at E3. I wanted to punch him in the face, but I uh, didn't. See, that's what I, that's what I'm talking about, Keem. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't. I'm not advocating you punching someone yeah, in the face. Is, I I didn't punch him. Right? He's 17. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Good move. X Charles is the type of kid, though. Like, if he could pull some strings and be 18 tomorrow, like <laughs> that's... <laughs> Dude, he's at Billionaire's Challenge when he's, like, 16, and he's, like, already 21. Like, he's got all the fucking, like, I I mean, I don't want to, I shouldn't really say a a lot of private stuff because it is private, and I don't like to break the the trust of stuff behind the scenes. But, yeah, you're right, 100%, Blade, I hear you. I don't know. I just uh, the kid was probably at a where I kind of want to see people actually throw down. Like, I'm kind of interested in that, you know? Like, uh... I just I think it'd be I think it'd be interesting to fucking get some YouTubers there and YouTubers that actually have like uh, qualms with each other. If they were actually in front of each other, what would they do? You know, I'm telling you right now, if I ever meet Pawn Star for hire, I will fuck with that guy. <laughs> I will push him. I will trip him. I will do whatever to get him angry enough to swing at me, and then I'll break his fat nose. <laughs> You really don't like that kid, no, huh? I fucking hate him. He's always starting shit. He's always getting – now, I haven't heard anything about him for a long time because I think he blocked me on Twitter. But this motherfucker calling out fisticuffs, like, you know me. Like, you're either my friend or you're my fucking enemy. And if you're my friend, I'll fucking go the ninth for you. Well, this dude is, like, fucking with uh, Fearcrat's ex-girlfriend, which is my good friend. Uh, uh, what is her name? Uh, <laughs> Vixen. He- Time out. Time out. How do you go? Which is my good friend. What is her name? I know. Like, how do you- no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. No, I, I, Vixen, we actually started Vixen in FAG before she knew anyone. Okay. But anyhow, uh, Vixen, he started fucking with uh, fisticuffs. I mean, the dude's just always constantly in the middle of drama and starting shit. And he keeps on coming at me all the time talking shit, and he's got his little fanboys talking shit. Because he knows he'll get a rise out of you, which will send him subscribers. Yeah, but the rise that he's going to get is my fist in his fucking nose. If he if he shows up to pack Seattle, I'm punching him. I'm punching him. And there better be a video camera rolling, because it's going on. <laughs> I, I look like this. I came into YouTube alone. I'm leaving alone. Uh, I got some cool people I've met along the way, but, like, you know. I got about five people I would jump in a fight with. The rest I'd be like, do you, you know? You could be the biggest Pawn Star fan in the world and you could hate DJ Keemstar, but you will definitely want to see me punch the kid. You're going to want to see it. <laughs> You're going to want to see it. I wish there was a way that they could set up like some legal thing for like boxing or whatever it was to put people in the ring. See, I'm I, I'm the opposite, bro. I don't I don't think like here's the thing with me fighting is it should be fighting like it should be, be great. It's not it's not a thing like let's put on the gloves and let's do this. No, fucking go at each other. 
You know what I mean? Like, it's not – like, if, if I'm in a – like, I, I've never been in a bar fight. But if let's say if I were in a bar fight, it wouldn't be like, okay, let's schedule a time to meet up and let's – let's uh, don't hit the face and uh, just uh, set up – fuck that. Like, fighting's fighting. You know, that's my personal take on it. Like, I could – if I'm bigger and stronger, I should be able to, or if I know how to fight, I should do that. Not because some dude took MMA lessons. That's fucking stupid. Here's like the fucking biggest reason why I want to kill that motherfucker. All right. <laughs> do you remember the billionaire's challenge thing with a assistant suicide? Nobody gave a shit about that. Everyone laughed. Everyone thought it was funny. No one cared. Mm-hmm. Pawn star for hire was the first one. He started tweeting Hutch. He started tweeting Fwiz. He started tweeting everyone saying, you know, and the reason why he did this is because he wasn't <laughs> picked. He was jealous because he wasn't picked to compete in Billionaire's know. Challenge. So he started everyone to get upset and, and to not be involved in Billionaire's Challenge. And the whole fucking – you know the COD community. We've seen them with Dildos for Africa on your page. You know They feed into that crybaby shit. So they were all like, oh, horrible, assisted suicide, horrible, oh my god. Uh. And he started the whole fucking thing. Then he uploaded oh. a video and lied to his subscribers saying that we kept the money. We kept all the money. Everybody was getting paid a shitload of money, which wasn't true. I want to. I just want to break his fucking nose. <laughs> I swear to God, dude. I just Where? Wanna... What? 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 Uh, what state is he in? I don't know, but he's got a really fat, ugly wife. And people are like, <laughs> "Well, hey, time out, time out." Dude. I know you're gonna be like, "That's that's not fair." Don't go after the wife, but yeah, you don't you don't you don't go after the the wife and kids. Like that's, that's something between cool. between you and him, though. Here's the rule. You don't go after kids. But the wife, that fucking Fight bitch is a fair game, dude. <laughs> no, no, I don't I – don't, I, I, I mean we're just going to disagree on this. But I, I don't I, – I say leave the wife out of it, bro. Like if you have an issue with him, talk to him. But you leave the wife out of it though, you know? She is an adult who made an adult decision to fucking marry a fat douchebag. <laughs> hate, hate on the kids, but – Anyhow, all right, I'm going to step back from the wife thing for a minute, although she is pretty heavy. Uh, You're crazy, bro. You're crazy. I don't – everybody, I don't fucking I, – I don't. I can't go sign on that one, but fucking I'm with you. I'm just saying, no give me a stick and let it be a Mexican party. I will hit that fucker like he's a pinata. Just, I, I hate him. I hate him. Let's talk about something else, because I'll just keep on going on and on and on and on. I just gained about 10,000 subscribers, but yeah, go ahead, go on. (laughs) Hey, did I tell you that when I was getting, um, when I was at the hospital, that I was watching TV and the boobs came on and my blood pressure actually dropped about 10 points? Yeah, yeah, I saw that video. Yeah. Is that serious? Yeah, I was serious. Like... They had me up on the machine, and first off, I don't know why they're checking my blood pressure. I came in there, I'm like, dude, I got a fucking tennis ball sized jaw here. But they it. always do that. They always do. I, that. I know, I know. And so they, but they took my blood pressure like once every half hour for like two and a half hours. And the one that when I was watching TV on the little uh, hospital TV, this fucking this this chick from Brazil who has like massively huge tits. It's getting bigger ones. Isn't even able to get them in the USA because no doctor will will do it because it's like unsafe. She has to like travel to Brazil to do it. <laughs> but she's fucking hot Damn. though. Like she's hot. Like she's super hot. Even with like even if she was like a B cup, she'd still be fucking begging. But she's just got fucking basketball sized tits. Jeez. And so th- she was doing an interview, and I just like like. All my senses just kind of went away, and I was just in like this peaceful land. And I didn't even, I didn't even feel the the little machine taking my blood pressure when that shit happened. All right, see, this doesn't make sense to me. If I were to see some sexy ass bitch, I would feel like my blood pressure would skyrocket. Um, yeah, I see. I understand that. Like, you think that you would you would get excited or whatever like that, but like. Like I'm just talking about maybe like, your penis filled with blood, so it made the blood pressure go down. Dude, ain't nobody that big. <laughs> I mean, think about how much blood could fit in a dick. Think about how little your dick is when it's not hard, and how big it is when it's hard. I mean, that's a dropping, lot of blood. If you're dropping your blood pressure noticeably because you get a woody, dude, I, I you ain't got shit. I ain't got nothing on you. That's for sure. God damn. Yeah, I mean, that's a little. That's a little extreme. Yeah, I mean, um, you're filling. You're, you're filling a bag there. 
Holy you fuck. get a hard on and you just pass out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. <laughs> I should probably apologize for attacking. I started thinking about it. I'm, I'm going to apologize for attacking Pawn's wife. Yeah, come on, bro. But like, I, I took it's, it's, all, it's all cool. If, if, you, if you don't like I the took person, it too far. that person attacks you, that's one thing. But you, you got to leave the fucking wife and the family out of it, you know? I know, I know. I took it too far. I'm sorry. Uh, and in all actuality, sorry. it really doesn't matter because it's fucking. It's YouTube. It's not fucking real life. It's not it's like it's gonna YouTube. be real life if I see that bitch. I'm gonna knock him until he looks like a goddamn raccoon. There you go. Speaking of raccoons. Oh my <laughs> god! Tell the story, Deranker. Listen to this shit, <laughs> dude. All right. I work in a big, huge factory. I'm a supervisor. I supervise. I don't know. 50 people, something like that. But this factory is like 250 square feet. And throughout the entire factory, I smell something burning. I'm walking through this huge factory. And I'm a night turn supervisor, so I'm the only manager there. I'm walking through this factory. I'm smelling something. I can't. I, something's burning. Something's burning. I mean, I'm all back, front, left, right, running. Something is burning in this place. And if I don't find it quick, I'm going to call the fire department because something's going to yeah. catch on fire. So I get the maintenance guys. I'm like, guys, we've got to find what the hell's burning because I've been smelling this. We've been everybody's complaining about it. It stinks. And something's burning, and it's been going on now for two hours. And they're like, yeah, we smell it too. So we search this entire plant. We trace it all the way back to the fr- all the way to the front of the building where the main power comes into the building. The 1600 amp, 480 volt lines coming into the building, and there's this big, huge breaker box in the in this front room. And the maintenance guy walks over. He goes, wow, it's really strong in here. He walks over to that box and takes a whiff, and he about knocks him over. He was like, oh, <laughs> fuck. What the fuck? He goes, whatever it is, it's got to be in this box. He takes he takes the panel off the box, and there is this huge, fat, headless raccoon laying across two plates of a three-phase, you know, where it's coming in three phases. He's laying across two of them. <laughs> and I tweeted out the picture, uh, and we're like, oh. I'll put a link to it in the description. I, when you first tweeted that out, I'm like, this raccoon has no fucking head. What happened to his head? I'll get to that. He, uh, we had to call the electric company. They had to shut the power off outside to get him out of there. They shut the power off. The maintenance guy goes in. He gets he gets the raccoon out of there, pulls him out. He doesn't have a head, which we thought it may have just been down in between, had his head in between the two plates. But no, he pulled him out, and it was just a you know charred body where his head used to be. He looks down in, and he goes, oh, there's the head. Here, what he said happened. He goes, that thing fell down here. His neck, he landed on this side of the plate. His neck came down on that side of the plate. It arced through his neck and literally, like, taking a lightsaber through a guy's fucking neck, cut him off. There was no blood, nothing like that, but severed his fucking head right off. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Damn. I mean, I mean, oh, God. And he always oh, stunk so bad. But, yeah, it, I actually I tweeted out the picture of the raccoon, so... Anybody that follows me knows that they've seen the picture. <laughs> can you can oh, you imagine so like bad. the other? Can you imagine the other animals in the forest? Yeah, did you hear about Jerry? <laughs> did you hear about him? They put him on the chair. <laughs> Dude, let, put, let, let me put this in perspective for you. Sixteen hundred amps. Most small houses have hundred amp service, maybe one hundred fifty, but usually they have a hundred amp service. That's like. The power of 16 homes with every light, every appliance, every electronic device on and running full blast 16 times over going through this raccoon's neck. Popped his head right off like a fucking dandelion. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> I actually have a picture of the decapitation, too. We pulled the head and the body out. I took a picture of that, but I didn't tweet that out. But I might tweet it out later after this airs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a very, uh, very interesting night. <laughs> Blade, what is your thoughts on that? <laughs> Go for it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I never thought electrocution would actually pop your head off. I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know? I don't know. <laughs> Dude, I, I've been scared for my life to uh, thunderstorms before. Like, some of the thunder this summer has been crazy. They say like thunderstorms down at the south are way worse than up here in New York, and the reason why is because there's like 
I, I, more humidity, I think. Or I don't know the exact reason, but this year the thunderstorms are fucking unreal. Like shaking the house. Like it, it's nuts. My sister actually had to live in Oklahoma for about two years. And she said one of the scariest things she's ever seen was a storm move in in the sky looking like it's not more than 500 feet above you and swirling. Whoa. So it, yeah. I mean, that's how it is in Oklahoma because all you get all in tornadoes. But she goes, every thunderstorm that rolls in there, the sky is swirling. And it just it's so low. And I'm sure anybody who's watching you lives down in Tornado Alley can probably attest to it. But she said it was one... You know, we're all we're from Ohio, so she had to live down there for two years, and she said it was just one of the most scariest sights you'll ever see, is the yeah. sky just spinning above you. Fucking Wizard of Oz shit right there. Yeah. Uh, uh, Blade, you live in Seattle. Like, what is, does it really rain, like, all day, every day? It rains a lot, yeah. I'm not going to lie. It, it, it does rain Isn't a good it, amount. Isn't it, like, considered a rainforest? It's not considered. No, shut up. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> Look, somebody Google this. I heard somebody say that Seattle's like a rainforest. That's an exaggeration. I mean, it does rain. And um, I'm not going to lie. I'm getting a little tired of it. Like, uh, I don't know. It's it's good for the... You'd feel like there'd be more gamers coming out of Seattle. We do have a lot of gamers. Like, what do you mean? They're... What do you mean? There's I'm just not saying, like, what do you do if it's raining outside? You go in and game, right? I actually, like, I know it sounds really weird, but, like, I actually enjoy the rain when I'm, like, hungover. Just because it's, like... It feels you, good. It just feels good. It just, yeah, it just feels fresh, and I don't know. I, I, I kind of actually dig the rain, but um, I don't know. I, I like the rain. A lot of people don't. I don't like it when it's fucking just super duper hot all the time. That shit gets annoying really fast. Um, I don't know. I, I I dig the rain. The only thing I don't like about the rain is it fucks up my shoes. You know what a cool thing is? Is like if you have a bunch of people over and you're having a fire and it's just like lightly sprinkling. Like I've been in those situations numbers of times. And if the fire's big enough and warm enough, you can't even feel it. It's a Wait, good time. What? a good time so uh if you had to live anywhere where i mean you said you like to travel if you had to live anywhere where'd you live uh i can't see myself living anywhere but here bro like hawaii you'd go to hawaii drake or you just went on a trip to hawaii what was the greatest and thing about that hawaii <laughs> i'd go i'd go to the dominican republic <laughs> yeah you only want to go to the dominican public to find that fucking porn star you're in love with no yes yes <laughs> but like, I've found that women from the Dominican Republic are all fucking just thick and beautiful. I don't know. All oh, you got them damn tacos. You know what's weird is you can't even tell, like, a lot of times, like, I had this friend that was black. Like, you, you know, he looks African-American. He wasn't. He was Dominican. You couldn't even tell. Like, you you can't tell. You can't I mean, tell someone's nationality if they're Dominican what they really are. That sounds like a horrible, horrible problem. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. And I just I wish there was a way to fix that. I mean, we're spending so much time on gun laws and gay marriage, but no one's really attacking the real problem. I bet you won't be able to dress up in no theaters no more. You watch. Dress up in the what? I said, I'll bet you no one will be allowed to dress up in theaters no more for, like, movie premieres. Oh, yeah. I'll bet you they outlaw that. I'll tell you what. I was planning on going to see The Dark Knight or whatever the movie's called, The Batman, the new Batman. But after yeah, I saw but that you shit. wasn't planning on dressing up as Robin, though, were you? Could you imagine the people that made that movie? They're probably shitting a brick. They're like, we just oh, lost no. millions of dollars in sales. Yeah, no, go. time out. Out. No one again. is going... I was going to watch the new Batman, but I might get shot. No one's thinking that, dude. Like, I don't know, man. Do you remember when Boys in the Hood came out? Now they had that same thing? Yeah. I said, I said, I'll wait for the video. Do you remember after 9 11 where they said that there was going to be, like, uh, mass destruction or, like, chemicals of mass destruction or whatever? There was some idiot down in Pennsylvania that fucking saran wrapped his whole entire house. Look. <laughs> I'm not joking. That's hilarious. Really? 
Yeah. Saran wrap would keep out a nuclear blast. Yeah, yeah that guy sounds so Saran smart. wrapped his whole house. So I got to look this up right now. <laughs> I swear to God. I saran can't... wrapped his house. First off, how much? you know what saran wrap that is? <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not fucking with you. How do you buy that much saran wrap? Oh, That's dude, we got, we got rolls like. They're huge. It's like that shrink wrap that they wrap pallets in. I'm sure a couple rolls of that would do a house. Guy Saran wraps his house. I'm fucking. I gotta find this. You know what time I wanted to make eggs hella bad, and when I went to the store, they wouldn't sell them to me because they thought I was gonna egg houses. <laughs> what? I swear to God, I'm not even joking. It, well, part of it was because I had to buy toilet paper as well. Like so. <laughs> I literally went to the store at like 1.30 in the morning and was trying to buy eggs and toilet paper, and they were not going for it. Yeah, sir, I'm going to need to see some ID. Was this like Halloween time? No, this was just during like, uh, I remember it was August of like 08 or some shit like that. And they, I was rattled. I was like, really? Like, come on, dude. Like, I've got way better things to do than go egg houses. What do I look like? Fucking 12? <laughs> but they weren't going for it. They're like, nope, sorry. We know what you're up to. I'm like, no, you don't. I want to fucking make an omelet and have to shit. So, fuck you. <laughs> we know what you're up to. That shit fucking had me so mad, bro. <laughs> oh, that shit's funny. No, it's like that happens all the time. Wow. People get denied services buy businesses all the time for things that are completely innocent. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I got carded for spray paint. I'm not Card- kidding. They want to see my ID for spray paint. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. They will card you for spray paint now. And cough syrup. You buy some cough syrup. You got you to gotta show ID. Which is stupid because right. it's like... Guy Saran Wrap's house. All right. I'm looking for this shit right now. You get ID'd for cough syrup? Yeah. Cough syrup, spray paint. What the fuck else? Well, that's stupid because that's like saying you can get drunk off cough syrup, but not if you're young. Whipped cream? Well, really? Yeah, the can, the, the ready whip. Yeah, that is something else used, awkward, used, bro. I used to work at Kroger's, all right. And um, if someone bought more than one can of Ready Whip, I had to verify they were eighteen. That, and, and I'll tell you why, because I used to stock at night there, and this dude comes in, and he just seems fine when he comes in. He asks like where the bathroom was or whatever. It just seemed like a normal guy coming in from the bar. And about ten minutes later, I see the same guy, kind of like. In a complete fucking trance, he's he's out of it. He's just wandering, <laughs> through the, he's wandering through the store, and I'm going, dude, is there something wrong? He's like, dude, where's the exit? I'm like, what? He's like, how do I get out of here? I'm like, out of where? Out of the store? He's like, yeah, where's? <laughs> he's like, where's the exit? And he's like talking real soft, like, where's the exit? I'm like, like, are you on that ready whip boy? I'm like, I'm like, dude, it's <laughs> the exit's in the front. What do you mean? It's right down this aisle. It's in the front. See the windows? He was like, oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Like, what the fuck was that all about? <laughs> I walked to the back of the store. Dude, there was like 15, 20 cans of Ready Whip laying on the ground, and these things had no air pressure. My man fucking whipped them all, and he was fucking gone. Oh, my God. That's funny. So it was like, after that, it was like we had to, we had to prove that they, people were old enough to buy it because whatever. It was just... They were laying all over the floor. I'm like, what the fuck happened to the goddamn whipped cream? And here he fucking huffed every fucking can on the shelf. Who really <laughs> wants to be high for 10 seconds, though? Like, come on. That's why he did them all, I guess. <laughs> he was like, fuck it. This shit's going to last all night. Dude, I'm so mad. I can't find the ceram wrapped house. I know this shit exists. I saw it on the news. Well, somebody will find it. I walked into Walmart not being able to find the exit. <laughs> what do you mean you don't know where the exit is? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's funny. 
Like, I've never done out. any stupid drugs like that ever. Like I've never. Oh, you want to hear? You want to hear a scary story? When I worked at uh, what's called QFC, which is basically like a really nice grocery store, um, there was this lady, and she came in, and she was going down the um, the condom aisle, like where the condoms are. Yeah. And she was uh, she she was poking um, she was poking holes in all the condoms. What? What? Yeah. So from then on out, we just put we don't they didn't sell them in like the aisle anymore. They just had them like she separated. had to have been one of those like anal fucking like pro life bitches. Yeah, I don't know. That's just like crazy to me, but whatever. Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of your pro life? You're trying to prevent abortion. Wait, did so, you and... catch her? Like, what happened to her? Yeah, no, we caught her. That's why. Like, what happened we... to her? What do you mean? What happened to her? We fucking called the police. <sighs> did she get arrested? Yeah. <laughs> like I made a seventeen-year-old girl what? pee her pants. I made a kid pee his pants one time. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> so I was working at Best Buy, and um, the like I was working the home entertainment center section, and <laughs> these kids came in and they both had backpacks on, and the security guy at the front's like, "Hey, dude, watch those kids because something doesn't seem right about them." And I was like, "Okay." So we watch them, and I don't see anything. The security guy, like, pages me. He's like, dude, they just went in the bathroom. Wait from outside the bathroom because I'm pretty sure they stole, like, uh, fucking Nintendo DS or some shit like that. I was like, okay. I basically stepped out. I was just like, are you guys doing okay? And they stood, in, like, stopped in their tracks, looked so scared, and the kid started pissing his pants. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? That's I'm going to guess that to Oh, yeah, he knew he was busted, dude. It's the yeah, same thing. It. That's right. I mean, we, you know, we caught this 17-year-old girl stealing makeup, and the cashier was like, give me the makeup. She was I don't have anything. I don't have anything. He was like, dude, he was just like, give me the makeup. And he and he already locked the door, so she couldn't even get out. <laughs> oh, I got a great <laughs> he one. He locked this... the door. She couldn't get out. He called. The, she called the police. He called the police and had her wait there. And while she's standing there, you just seen her jeans just fill up. <laughs> that's the sound of peeing your pants <laughs> so I was at this um, uh, a big and tall shop you know and I noticed that on all of, this is this is true story and this is fucking hilarious I noticed that none of the clothes like even the really nice shit like the nice pants and stuff like that nothing had security tags on it and, and I asked him I was like why is there no security tags on any of these clothes like every other department store I go to Right. There's like this fucking like ink bomb on every piece oh, of fucking yeah. of pants. Why is there no security tax on any of this stuff? And the lady literally told me she's just like, "What? You think they're gonna run away?" <laughs> and I thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Do you know in the early '90s, Tommy Hilfiger got really big by allowing they'd set up shops in uh, urban areas and allow people to steal their clothes. So Tommy Hilfiger would start making it into music videos and stuff like that. They mark their shit really high and they just let people steal. I heard. I remember there's a thing where everyone was getting pissed off because they they thought Tommy Hilfiger was a racist. I don't remember. That was that was remember, early. You know the story? What's the story? I'm trying to remember. That was early, like like '96ish. That was like Aaliyah times, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm so fucking sick. I hate being sick. Dude, I was I went on I went on YouTube today. I was like, how do you like what's a remedy for fucking bronchitis, right? So there's this lady and she's got the biggest tits ever. I swear to god, this bitch is Link me. Uh, Link. I will, I will, I will. Link me. Uh, <laughs> so she's sitting there, first of all, she talks about something about putting bacon soda and stuff. And that's for some other thing. And then the second part of the video, she's talking about bronchitis and she says you need to go get some grapefruits, take the shells of the grapefruit, not the actual grapefruit, but like the outside. You need to boil it and uh, then you need to let it simmer down and then drink it. So I send it over to my woman slave, Melissa, to go do it. So she goes and cooks it up and she comes down. She gives me the thing and I drink it. And I, it was the worst thing ever, dude. It was so fucking bitter, dude. I felt like I was drinking poison. When you said woman slave, did yeah, you check over your shoulder to make sure your wife wasn't there? Yeah, really. Yeah. She's you referred my, to Melissa as your woman slave? She's my woman slave. Fuck that, man. Melissa's cool. 
<laughs> Bliss is cool. Bliss is awesome. I love her. She's my woman slave. Um, I, I just imagine you looking over your shoulder while you say yeah, that. Yeah, her standing sure. right there with her hands on her hips. <laughs> when I was kidding. When I was camping, uh, one of the people who's, like, married to this uh, lady, he kept on saying, like, every time someone would talk to me, like, yeah, bitch, like that, you know? But uh, whenever he would talk to her, he'd, be, he'd say, yeah, bitch, but he'd do it in such a way so that people around him could hear, but she couldn't hear. <laughs> See, Melissa, I mean, Melissa talks to me like I'm a retard, you know what I mean? She, like, talks down to me and I talk down to her. That's, like, our just kind of our relationship. Oh, okay. Well, like, we love each other, but we're not nice to each other at all. Asshole. Dickhead. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, bitch, go go to the store and get me a fucking ice cap. Fuck off, faggot. <laughs> She'd be like, all right, give me some goddamn fucking money, bitch. <laughs> as, as ridiculous as it sounds, like, a lot of relationships actually work like that, you know? Yeah, like, um... We... But you'd never let anybody else talk to your woman like that. Right, you. right. If someone right, else right. is talking shit to her, I'd be like, yo, just don't let her hear it because I don't have to defend her. <laughs> 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 no, oh. just, no, I'm just joking. I'm just no, joking. You're, no, you're not. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I've been in this relationship with uh, Melissa for four years. and um, That's Yeah, four years. Uh, Mia is three. We were together for a year before we... Uh, Accidentally you know, made a child. Yeah, I know my you know my wife and her get along real well. That's why they kept in touch for a while on Facebook and shit. The thing is, once you once you're with someone for years, I mean, it's just a different relationship than it is when you first start dating. Like I don't know people that are really like when in you love. First like, start dating, you're just trying to get a piece of ass, so you're gonna be nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try to explain that to my wife all the time. She you know, talks to, like, guys she works with, I'm like, she's like, well, he's really nice. I'm like, well, yeah, he's being real nice to you because he thinks you're hot and he thinks he has a chance. Yeah. No, I, no, no, he's just being, he's just a friend. No, he's women, not. He's not. He's not. <laughs> There's no <laughs> such thing. He's trying to get into your pants. Oh, no, he's not. And this went on for, like, months and months, and then he, like, tried made a pass at her, and she was, like, devastated. I can't believe it. I'm like, I've been telling you for months the dude's going to make a move. And she's yeah. like, oh, no, I thought he was my friend. I'm what like, I hate, I, what I hate is when he was going to make I a bat. Is when, uh, so when I went to the Billionaire Challenge 2, I let this um, I let this female drive me there and then drive my car back. Well, when the car, while she was driving the car, the muffler fell off. And so <laughs> she's like calling me and she's like, the fucking muffler fell off. I'm like, God damn it. Like, fuck, you know? And so I'm like, just get it fixed, and I'll fucking have him call me, and I'll pay for it. And uh, while, like, when she picked me up at the airport, she's like, if you ever need to get anything else done, go to this place that I went to, because they were they were just, they went above and beyond. They were really nice. <laughs> and I'm just like, no shit. Really? You think? And uh, she's like, what do you mean? She's just like, I'm like, you're, you have fucking triple D tits. Of course they're going to be fucking nice to you. Like, fuck, don't yeah. Don't think that I'm going to get the same kind of fucking excellent customer service if I go there. You're dumb. Right. If I need anything done, I always have Melissa go do it for me because I know they're going yep. to, like, hook her up. Yeah, hell yeah. Yep. That's the way it always works. That's <sighs> a good life tip right there. Have your hot uh, girlfriends and lady friends do stuff like that. And then at the very end, you can just come out of it and be like, um, okay, you know, here's my card. Dude, I'm not even joking. Me and Melissa, we, like, went on a trip. We quit both of our jobs. We went on a trip all the way around the country, right? Well, we got, like, halfway through the country. This is, like, four years ago. Um, wait, maybe even more. No, it was, like, four years ago when we first started dating. Uh, we, like, ran out of money, so we, we didn't know how to get fucking back. And I was, like... I was, like, telling Melissa, I'm, like, call, like, all your guy friends. Call, call, like, you know, this person. Call to your ex-boyfriends. I was, like, pimping her out. Yeah. And they, they all came to the aid. They just kept sending money. Yeah. And we got back. I used to um, I used to kick with this girl. Uh, we, didn't, we never dated uh, anything like that. It was just, like, friends with benefits type thing. Right. And <laughs> we used to go to the bars, and she would flirt with guys – 
And she would always basically come back with two drinks, one for her and one for me. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah you never heard of doing that before? You've never done no. that? No. Shut, shut up. You've well, done, actually, send, done that. Send, wait, send my woman to go mess with some dude so we both get free drinks? Yeah. She was, she was no, see, I, see, I have a theory on that. My theory she on wasn't that my like, woman, though. She wasn't my woman, though. Wasn't oh, my... okay, okay, okay. That's right. Now, I knew I was going home with her that night. That wasn't the question, but like, okay. it, it was. She wasn't like she wasn't my woman, though. Not at all. Like, yeah, if that was like my wife or my fucking significant other, I'd have an issue with that, you know. Plus, Dude. this is this is back when I was like twenty four, twenty five, and, and didn't yeah, really, uh, I used to do that shit before uh, before yeah, like so you, I was legal enough to drink. Like when I was like nineteen with a fake, you know, I used to do that shit. Well, the thing is, you know, I, my wife used to go out with her friends or whatever and go to the bar, and they're like, oh, we'll never have to pay for a drink. The guys will pay for our drinks. And I'm like, look, there's a rule you need to follow. The first drink is free. All right? The first drink's always free. The second one, you owe him something. That's the way it works. That when yeah, he buys but that they'll, second they'll drink take... and you accept it, you owe him something. He's going to come to that table. And you're like, and they'll, she'll come home and say, "Yeah, he bought us a drink. And he tried to come over and talk to us." I said, "Well, yeah, you, you accepted the second drink." She goes, "Well, what's that mean?" I said, "You owe him something at that point. The first one's free." And, and they're like oblivious to this sometimes. They think, "Oh, they're just being nice." Dude, no, women no, will generally pants. women will generally go out to a bar to dance and have a good time with their friends. Yeah, men, we go out to a bar for one. We're not trying to hang out with our friends and have a good time. We're no, trying. We don't to even like our friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. We <laughs> we're just trying to go out and get tail. That's the only reason why we're there, yeah. right? And if it costs us a couple beers, it's worth it. But that second one, either you better come talk to me, or I'm gonna spit in the third one. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yo, we've been going for uh, quite a long time. Do you want to call it a day? <clears throat> I'm four beers strong. Or do we have anything else to talk about? I think that was a fucking good show. I think we just. I, I, uh, <clears throat> I've stopped buying drinks for females. Like I, it's just like I'm not seeing a return on my investment. So, and it used to look more mysterious when you don't buy drinks for them. You know. No, I'm an asshole, dude. I'll buy you one, but if you don't come over, I'm moving on. The thing <laughs> is, you buy. You can't get a second one from me unless you're coming over. You, try a, uh, you buy a drink for a girl, you're automatically like saying, "Hi, I'm a loser," and like just doesn't fall. Oh yeah, no, you're, no. You're, no, you're devaluing yourself. Yes, I, you I, are. You, it doesn't follow no, the, the laws no, of nature. No, 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 no. If you tell the bartender, and if the bartender's cool and will say, "Hey, you know, the guy down there is is uh, is, is like to buy you this drink," you know, no strings attached, not like he was just like to buy you this drink. Okay, that's what you get the bartender to say. And they're like, oh, cool, no strings attached. And they'll look over and they'll say thank you. And if they're with their friends and you're with a friend and they've got two there, they'll, they'll come over. Trust me, this shit works. The, people don't buy drinks, for, buy women drinks for nothing. This shit works. Now, like I said, if I buy you one and you don't come over, you ain't getting another one from me. Like, dumbass guys will sit there and keep buying a woman a drink, trying to get them drunk, and then, then they have to build up the confidence to go talk to them. No, I buy you a drink. You need to bring your ass to my table. I, I, I completely agree with everything you just said, okay? But what but what I'm saying, though, is that I used to be that, that same way. Like, you know, hey, as a conversation starter, I'll fucking buy, some, you know, buy a girl a drink and we'll take a drink and we'll talk or whatever. But, like, I feel that even just buying that one drink, you're almost devaluing yep. – you're, you're devaluing yourself. You're taking a step it's down. A, yeah, it's just the whole law, you know. The whole laws of attraction is to make yourself, like uh, – you Almost unattainable, you know. But what I you mean? make her feel like she owes you something. You know, you, you say no string. Just say hey, no strings attached. Just I, the the guy over there would like to buy you this drink. He said, you know, no strings attached, no nothing. Just enjoy the drink. I'd and be like, she'll, fuck she'll, that. She'll over. Well, hold on. Well, no, that's all you. No, you're not listening. You, you make them think there's no strings attached. They'll say, they'll look around. They'll say thank you. And as they're drinking that drink, they're like. Well, you know, maybe I should go talk to him. I mean, you know, really didn't. He doesn't want me to, or he doesn't think I need to, or there's no strings attached. She'll come over. Trust me, it works. Yeah, but the guy scoring the but if top you just, pitch if in the you club just, ain't buying drinks at all. He's just no, no, being no, no, an no. asshole. It, but if you just say, "Hey, buy that lady a drink," and the bartender says, "Hey, this is from the guy over there," you know, she's gonna like, "Well, okay, he's 
kind of ugly or whatever <laughs> and and she's gonna be like well i'm not going over there but if you get the bartender if you get you know the bartender you know what the bartender have know what they had the bartender say shit works trust me men, men you know men have been doing that for years sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but like i said you don't come over here on that first drink you ain't getting a second one from me the dumbasses will keep buying that same woman a drink and she keeps coming over where after the second one she's just using your ass for free booze yeah and then when you come over and say, hey, you know, how's it going? My name's fucking dumbass. You know, she's going to be like, yeah, well, it's we got to go. <laughs> yeah, you got me too drunk. Uh... Mm-hmm. Right. What do you guys think of all these fuckers saying YOLO? Fuck YOLO. I like what you said. You obviously like one whatever the hell you one said. One direction. <laughs> one direction. You obviously like one direction. I think YOLO means you only live online. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, dude, uh, I forgot who was. Oh, I think it was – maybe it was Axjaws or something, a stream I saw. He goes, I was saying YOLO before anyone. I'm like, what? Oh, you're cool. I think YOLO is just went to like – in a matter of being popular, popular, popular for like a few days, went from cool to like straight douchebag in like 2.3 seconds. They said the same thing about Epic, though. Remember when Epic was taken off and people were, like, bashing Epic? But now Epic's just... It's Epic, that's all. It's no big deal. here game. forever. Yeah. I mean, the, the YOLO thing just got overused by, by two young people. Like, you're not... If you're, you know, if you're 10 years old and you're yelling YOLO before you, yeah. you know... <laughs> you haven't even jump, lived jump, yet. Jump, about yeah, you're not... Exactly. <laughs> I saw a thing, someone posted on my Facebook, they said that uh, it was Jack Black, and he said that YOLO is carpe diem for stupid people. <laughs> I'm a punch pawn star in the face. YOLO! Yeah, it's like... I don't know. I, I, know. I kind of wish... Uh, um, I kind of wish that we... Uh, I wanted to get um, uh, Prez and... What's his name? Drive Turkey on here, bro. They wanted a prize backed out at the last minute. I don't know. It sucks, though, because I think now they're on, like, cool terms. Like, I don't think they were ever, like, mad at each other. the thing is, is that they have each other's numbers, so fucking Jive was, like, texting Prez like crazy. You know, you know, there's a, there is a, who's that, uh, that Dream Crusher? He does pretty good. I like his videos. I don't know who that is. Uh, He's he's, he's a very small channel right now, but I I think he's going to grow because, he he's, he makes some good points, but you know, just what, what I'm is, saying. What kind of videos does he do? He he's you know older guy, kind of like uh, El Presador, and just you know rips on like you know the the big YouTubers how they're always whining about this that and the other. Uh, he's he's got some pretty good videos, but I'll leave that up to you guys. But I don't know. It, it just he tweets a lot. I usually retweet a lot of his stuff. But he's you know just a small channel right now. I just I, I get tired of people. All they do is complain about other people. It's like, what are you just gonna make a content, you know? Or they complain about fucking like, all right, Thunder is an annoying bitch. He should win fucking Crybaby of the Year. Like Thunder cries every single day on Twitter about <clears throat> Modern Warfare Three. The game came out in November. It's fucking July of the next year, bro. How are you still complaining? Okay, who about is this game? guy? I, I see a lot of retweeting of his shit too. Who is this guy, and what is his problem? Thunderstruck. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he his whole his name's <laughs> his name's Legend of Thunder. Um, he's actually a cool ass dude. Like I've um, I've known him for a while. He's actually the one that invented uh, "You Ain't Grizz, Baby." Mm. Um, but uh, anyway, he. You know, he just he's just a, a commentator, and uh, some people like him, some people don't. I'm I'm he cool. He had to have blocked me because I don't see his tweets anymore. No, I, I just I see a lot of people like ripping on this guy on Twitter for some reason. That's all. I just didn't know who he was. I just Nobody can't to me, it, I guess. I've been watching him for fucking months now, complaining about Modern Warfare Three on Twitter. It's like, dude, I gotta unfollow you. But I, <laughs> well, here here here's the thing. So like. As as a Call of Duty player, like a Modern Warfare three player, basically any Call of Duty, during the time that it's out, we all secretly hate it. Like we all secretly dislike the game, but we love it at the same time. It's like it's like that. Uh, imagine having a super high maintenance girlfriend that you fucking hate her, 
but you're not going to leave her because she's hot. See what I'm right, saying? Like, that, right. That's the kind of mentality. So there's pe- there's a lot of people we we just kind of bear through it. We don't talk about it. We might have that one video where we bash it, but we don't talk about it. But with Thunder, Thunder just speaks his mind and he fucking just bashes the shit out of it. Some people take it as complaining, but I think it's almost like a uh, what's the dude's name? Like you know how Andrew Dice Clay or like a, a Roddy Dangerfield, how he's talking about gets no respect or whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of how Thunder is, and so a lot of people kind of feel what Thunder's but saying. Because... Played, but well, here's played. the thing: is he is, he's is, saying he the make, same? Uh, he listen. He's saying the same thing July of this year. Okay, my question is though: is is he making valid points, or is he just got sand in his vagina? He makes valid points. Okay. I mean, um, yeah, like it's. It's, it's kind of hard to explain because you have to be a, uh, a Call of Duty player to kind of understand the bull. Like, now, okay, now, one, here's the thing, though. If you play Call of Duty, if you play any video game a lot, a good amount of time, okay, there is, especially online multiplayer when you're playing against people with lag and randomness, you're going to have, sometimes there's going to be deaths that you just go, that's fucking ridiculous, you know? Or, sure. Welcome to the internet. I'm Duranker. Ex- I'll be your tour today. <laughs> exactly. Your tour guide. So when shit like that happens, like little things in the game that he might not agree with, like I don't necessarily agree with everything Th- Thunder says, but like I-, I do get where he's coming from when he gets frustrated with the game. So if he gets like quick scoped, I don't. You, you know what quick scoping is? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. If he gets quick scoped, I tried it. My last video. It didn't work out too well. If he gets quick scoped, or if he thinks that a certain kill cam he didn't like, he'll upload a video talking shit about it and then doing that. Yeah. I think half the time Thunder is trolling when he says half the stuff he says because like sometimes okay. he he does come off hypocritical, but I think that's more so Thunder trolling people and trying to get reactions out of people. Uh, okay. All right, well here's my reaction. Halo Reach came out, it sucks, so I didn't play it. All right, why the fuck are you playing that. Modern Warfare Three? If you hate it so much, why are you fucking six months, seven months, eight months later still talking about the same thing? Like, go do something else. You're a fucking crybaby. Well, you obviously haven't played Call of Duty. Dude, you can complain, like the white you can complain but you can't complain on a daily basis about the same fucking thing over and but over. Why, but why do you get to call on whether whether that man can complain on something or not? See what I'm saying? I'm like, just saying, who, who, dude, made you, who made you the complaining complete? I'm going to tell you right now, when I tweeted out that Thunder should get Crybaby of the Year 2012, it got retweeted like 500 fucking times. Everybody <sighs> was like, you're right. I have to stop following him. The, there's like an army of people out there that hate Thunder because he won't shut the fuck up. He keeps crying. Like, this isn't just me. This ain't a personal opinion. See, that's the kind of guy I want in my game. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of guy I want in my videos, bitching and complaining. Oh my god, that's fucking bullshit. You know, I, I hate like I, I I hate like singling people out or whatever because I know a lot of people do complain about the game, but I feel yeah. like he he is outshined more than any of those other people. But like, yeah. he just here's the thing. You know what's funny though is 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 I uh, talking about El Presidor. I have watched that dude for Jesus. It had to be three years now. I've been subscribed to this guy's channel. I mean, long before he was the cinema doing commentaries, he used to do the chair rants and shit. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I like that. right before all that shit. I mean, I, I I I still love his videos. I love watching him play and 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 bitch and moan. But I'm sitting there thinking the whole time I watch his videos, I'm like, this is the guy I want to be matched up with or matched up against or Hell whatever. Yeah. You know. Hell I mean, this yeah. is this is the guy that would. You know, if, if it wasn't El Presidor, this is the guy that I want in there. Are you ready for an hour of directed orgasmic podcast known as the Bad Kid Show? With your host, DJ Kim Star, and only use me, Blade. Oh, baby. Show. Yeah. I don't know 